السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن عدة الشهور عند الله 12 شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض منها أربعة حرم ذلك الدين القيم فلا تظلموا فيهن أنفسكم وقاتلوا المشركين كافة كما يقاتلونكم كافة واعلموا أن الله مع المتقين صدق الله العظيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما وعملا وإخلاصا وتوفيقا يا رب العالمين الحمد لله we begin with the praise and mighty uh, and glory of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may complete salutations be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the one who was sent as mercy to the world may peace and blessings of Almighty Allah be upon his family upon his companions and to all those who follow him till the day of judgment we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us knowledge and to give us the ability to act upon that knowledge with sincerity and to give us benefit through that knowledge. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to clearly make us see the truth and make us follow the truth. And we ask Allah to make us clearly see the falsehood and make us avoid and abstain from that falsehood. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Inshallah, dear brothers and sisters, as we are resuming Sunday morning halaqa, which means after Fajr every Sunday, we will be bringing a new halaqa re related to different topics, and they could be seasonal as well. Like our today's topic is regarding the month of Muharram, and in particular on the day of Ashura, and what is the importance and significance of the day of Ashura, and what are some of the historical events that are related to this day of Ashura. So the month of Muharram is the first month of the Islamic calendar which we have commenced. We have commenced the year 1442 Hijri after the migration of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ashura is the 10th of that Muharram. So Muharram is the first month of the Islamic calendar. The 10th date of Muharram is known as Ashura. But before we go on to Ashura or we go on to the month of Muharram and the virtues of the month of Muharram and the different significance or significant events that are related to the month of Muharram let's talk a little about the Islamic calendar that why did the Muslims need to adopt a calendar subhanallah when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was born and even before that the months were very well known in the Arabian culture and in that society they knew those months and those 12 months which were commonly known as Muharram, Safar, Rabiul Awwal, Rabiul Thani, Jumad Al Awwal, Jumad Al Thani, Rajab, Sha'ban, Ramadan, Shawwal, Dhul Qa'da and Dhul Hijjah they were part of that community before Islam came and the way they used to record dates was with it, well, it, were, it was linked with a special circumstance or a special event that happened in that particular year. And this kept on going even at the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until the time of Umar Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu came and one of his governors from the province of Basra, another great Sahabi by the name of Abu Musa Al-Ash'ari Radiallahu Anhu sent a letter to Umar Radiallahu Anhu asking that, O oh, Amir al muminin we get confused by the months because they had the months but they did not have the, uh, the, the year or the, or the reference of the years or the number of that year that wasn't put in place. So when Abu Musa al-Ash'ari complained to Umar radiallahu anhu that sometimes we do not know what is meant by Sha'ban. Is it this Sha'ban? Is it the previous Sha'ban? Or is it the next Sha'ban that is to come? So... Hence, it was, it, was, it was needed that Muslims adopt a calendar. 
So in this regard, and you're just going back on that topic um, where I mentioned how they used to record dates. Even at the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, significant events were linked with those years in terms of recording those years. So for example, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in Amr al-Fil, right? The year of the elephant. Because that event of Abraha and his armies coming to destroy Mecca, that took place in the year Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. So commonly it was known as Amr al-Fil, right? And similarly, uh, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given Nubuwa, uh, and then when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lost his wife Khadija radiallahu anha, and his uncle Abu Talib, that was known as Amul Huzn. And when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina Tul Munawwara, it was known as Amul Hijra. And then in Medina Tul Munawwara, the years calmly got to know uh, with, with, with a particular event. So for example, the year in which the Battle of Badr was fought, or the year in which the Battle of Uhud was fought, or the year during which Sul Hudaybiyah happened, or the Am al-Fath, the year during which the expedition or the conquest of Mecca happened. And likewise, Am al-Wisal, or Am al-Hajj, the year Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam performed Hajj. And Am al-Wisal, the year Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left this world. So commonly, they had the months, they had the months there, but which year it was, it was linked with the significant events that happened in that particular year. But then as the Muslim Empire grew and you know subhanallah they reached to the east and to the west now the need came that Muslims needed to have a set calendar for the Khilafah so Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu gathered the kibar al-sahaba meaning the elders of the sahaba to discuss this issue and they all agreed that we need to adopt a calendar and different suggestions were given as to when should be the year one. As I mentioned in my khutbah two days ago that some suggested that it should be the ta at the, uh, the year one should be from the birth of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then some suggested that it should be uh, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on the night journey of Isra wal Mi'raj. And others suggested that it should be from the migration of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the year which Hijrah took place. And, you know, as as we know the Hijrah calendar, or as, as we know that Islamic calendar is based upon the Hijrah, the migration. And this view was adopted, and you know, there are many reasons. Um, as I discussed in my Jummah Khutbah, some of them would be that this is a new beginning. This was a new beginning for the Muslims. They they left behind everything and they established a community based upon Islamic principles. And this was one of the reasons why uh, Muslims adopted the Hijra, Hijri calendar. And it is important to know, dear brothers and sisters, we are accustomed to the Gregorian calendar and many times we are unaware of the Islamic dates. And Islam, knowing Islamic dates and calendars, it is important because a lot of our our ibadah and a lot of our, for example, uh, hajj, it is, it can only happen in the month of the hijjah fasting the month of Ramadan, right? That's when commonly we, we or that's when, you know, subhanAllah, leg regularly we check upon the Islamic calendar, right? But other than that, uh, it is not very common. And it, we should, for, for, for the sake of knowing at least, uh, be connected in one way or the other with the Islamic calendar. So after the calendar, after the calendar year, uh, the Hijra that was ad adopted, that Muslim calendar will be based upon the Hijra. The debate came as to what should be the first month. So the month was Muharram, and it was chosen as Muharram. Remember, as I said, the months were commonly known by the people of Mecca and by the Arabian society and with everyone as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran mentioned that inna shuhuri inda shahra, that the amount of months with Allah are 12 right minha arba'atun hurum and from these 12 months four are sacred which are those four months so Rajab Dhul Qa'da Dhul Hijjah and Muharram they are sacred and then it was commonly known, even in the 
in pre-Islamic Arabia that these sacred months, the people were not supposed to fight in those months. The people were not supposed to quarrel in those months. And for long periods of time, battles used to happen. But when these sacred months came, those battles were put on a pause. And one of the primary reasons was that Hajj takes place in Dhul-Hijjah. And usually back in the day, the caravans used to travel a month prior and they would leave and it would take them almost a month to reach back to their destinations. And hence, Dhul-Qa'dah and Muharram were considered sacred. And Rajab, a standalone, was also considered sacred. So what, what, what does it mean by sacred months? So the, the term that is used is Ashhurul Hurum, right? The sacred months, Haram. So the, that word Haram, Ra and Meem. So that is the same root letter from which Muharram comes from. That means it is a sacred month. It is a month that is sanctified. And that's why Allah said, فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ That do not wrong yourselves, meaning do not commit sins and do not uh, do transgression upon yourselves by falling into sins. And another point to note is that the pagans or the Meccans, they considered these months sacred and they used to pause their fighting. But many times they used to change dates. For example, they would switch months and as a result, people used to get confused. And when Prophet ﷺ performed Hajj, Prophet ﷺ remarked that today the calendar date ha has been set and the and the nizam and the tartib and the system of the months and the order of the months has been restored back to the day Allah has created the heavens and the earth. So going on from that, as I mentioned, four of those are sacred. So Muharram, same word comes from Hurum, which means uh, sanctified or something which is sacred. So for example, the opening takbir, when we pray our daily prayers is known as takbiratul ihram, right? You are bound by some rules and laws. See Masjid al-Haram, right, where we face towards. Why is it known as Masjid al-Haram? Because it is a sacred mosque. Baytullah al-Haram, the house of Allah, which is sacred. And similarly, human beings, they are also sacred. And the month of Muharram, it is also special because this month in the hadith of Prophet wasallam, is known as Shahrullah, the month of Allah. And it is important to note here, you know, subhanAllah, what does this really mean, Shahrullah, the month of Allah? Because that is a very loaded term. So for example, in Arabic, you have mudaf and mudaf ilay. So for example, you have this book, right? You would say kitabu Muhammadin, that this book belongs to Muhammad. So similarly, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes ownership of something, even though he's the owner of every single thing, that shows the intensity and that shows how sacred and how sanctified that thing is. So for example, kitabullah, the book of Allah, what does it mean? Quran. So similarly, the shahrullah, the month of Allah, is Muharram. Baytullah, the house of Allah, what is that? The Kaaba. Rasulullah, the messenger of Allah, who is that? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when Allah takes and ascribes something particularly to him, even though everything is owned by Allah, that shows the intensity and how valued that thing is. So Shahrullah, Muharram, it is the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And diving into that, Muharram, it contains a lot of virtues. In particular, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَفْضَلُ الصِّيَامِ بَعْدَ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانِ شَهْرُ اللَّهِ شَهْرُ اللَّهِ الْمُحَرَّمْ That the best fasting after the month of Ramadan is the fasting done in the month of Muharram. So, inshallah, now I'm going to go into some of the reasons why the month of Muharram is so virtuous and why it is so special. As I mentioned, number one, it is Allah has taken, uh, Allah has ascribed it to Himself that this is the month of Allah, Muharram. Right? And as I mentioned, in the months which are sacred, falling into a sin, it is greatly aggravated. Similarly, rewards in these months are also aggravated, exaggerated, meaning if you do something, you will get a magnificent reward. But at the same time, if you fall into a sin, committing a sin in these months is more severe than committing a sin in the non-sacred months. Even though sin is a sin at the end of the day, 
but committing them especially during the sacred months it contains a greater value so now fasting as prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prescribed that the best fasting it is the fasting done in the month of muharram and likewise to complete that hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that wa afdalu salah ba'd al faridha qiyamul layl that the best prayer after the obligatory prayers is qiyamul layl is the night prayer when a person stands alone with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so why did i want to share the entire hadith with you so that we get this perspective that we are encouraged to do extra ibadah worship particularly in the month of muharram that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam deemed that the best fasting after the month of ramadan is the month of muharram and you could ask when should we fast well that is also prescribed and recommended by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that a person should try their best to fast on every monday and thursday monday why because prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this is a this is this was the day i was born and hence in terms of gratitude i like to fast so in following the sunnah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we should fast try to fast the day of monday thursday every monday and thursday our a'mal our deeds are taken up to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're presented to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i would like my deeds to be presented to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state while i'm fasting so this is directly from the sunnah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you know since we are in a sacred month since we are in the month of muharram and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam recommended us to fast in this month why not try to follow this sunnah and get even greater reward by fasting every or trying to fast every monday and thursday also in addition to that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam recommended that 13th 14th and 15th of every islamic month a person should fast and this was the advice given to abu huraira radiyallahu anhu that abu huraira radiyallahu anhu he narrated that my khalili awsani khalili that my my close friend meaning muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised me to fast the three days and these three days are known as ayamul bid the white days meaning during which the moon is full so 13th 14th and 15th and if nothing then of course the 10th of muharram and inshallah we will get into the day of ashura now a question may pop and pop up in our minds is well we just finished the calendar with the month of dhul hijjah and in the first 10 days of dhul hijjah we were told to fast right we had the day of arafah where you know we all fast we all tried to fast so again why does it how does it make sense that so soon in the month of muharram again the similar virtues are being mentioned remember muharram is the starting of the year right and dhul hijjah is the end of the year you begin the year with good deeds and you end the year with good deeds subhanallah that is truly the cycle of our lives as well like prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam before going to sleep he would remember allah when he wakes up he remembers allah so the last thing and the first thing right they say the ending the starting and the ending are the most important things right if you have a strong start and a strong end right that will that is considered more important than a strong middle so start your year with with the worship of allah and your year with the worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala similarly our lives start with the worship of allah and end with the worship of allah and when a person has this habit that especially every ending that they want to do right whether they're finishing their work they're finishing their degree or their assignment or whether they're fir- finishing the prayer whether they're finishing the month of ramadan whether they're finishing their day and about to sleep remember allah right so that way we will when we make dua o oh allah grant us a beautiful ending from this world we will be granted that and inshallah it is our hope that every single one of us pass away with la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah now coming another 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 reason why this month of muharram is virtuous is it contains ashura and as i mentioned ashura it is the 10th date of the month of muharram even the people of makkah they used to 
commemorate this day, the day of Ashura, and they used to fast. The non or or the or the Mushrikeen al Mecca, the the non believers of Mecca, they used to even some of them they used to fast this tenth of Muharram, and you may be wondering why, and it is mentioned in some narrations when when a person would have committed a major sin, a great sin, and they felt remorse and they felt guilt inside them in order to overcome that remorse and guilt those people used to fast as a compensation the day of ashura but then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he migrated to madinatul munawwara he migrated to madinatul munawwara and the first year when the when 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 the day of ashura came he mandated everyone to fast. He made it obligatory upon every single person to fast the day of Ashura, the tenth of Muharram. So now we may be questioning ourselves. Well, we always thought that it was Sunnah. How come, you know, with this it sounds like it is it is an obligation to fast on the day of Ashura? Well, yes, it was an obligation. Before the fasting of the month of was prescribed. The fasting on the day of Ashura became mandated upon every single one. But then in the second year of Hijri, the second year after Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina al Munawwara, the fasting of the month of Ramadan became an obligation and fasting on the day of Ashura became a recommendation. It became a highly emphasized sunnah of Prophet ﷺ. And that's why, you know, and there are many ahadith which are related to this um, day uh, to, to the day of Ashura and inshallah we will get into the main reason why we fast on the day of Ashura so as I was saying it became an optional fast in which Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said man sha'a fal yasum wa man sha'a aftar that whoever wants to fast they should fast and whoever wants to uh, uh, not fast and break their fast on the day of Ashura it is permitted for them to do but what is better it is to fast on the day of Ashura so why do we fast on the day of Ashura? What is the reason why we are recommending and why we, we, why we basically have reverence for the day of, day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram? When Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam interacted with the, with the Jewish community in Medina al Munawwara, he found them that they would fast on the 10th day of Muharram. And he said, ما هذا اليوم الذي تسومونه? That what is this day that you fast? They replied, قالوا هذا يوم عظيم أنجى الله فيه موسى وقومه وأغرق فرعون وقومه فصامه موسى شكرا فنحن نسومه. That this is the day when Allah سبحانه وتعالى rescued Musa and his nation and he drowned Fir'aun and his group and Musa عليه السلام he would fast in gratitude the 10th of Muharram and we in following that فَنَحْنُ نَسُومُهُ that we fast this day as well. So then فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said فَنَحْنُ أَحَقُّ وَأَوْلَى بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ that we have more right and we are more closer to Musa عليه السلام than you are فَصَامَهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم that then Prophet ﷺ fasted the 10th of Muharram and he ordered the Sahaba, the companions, and he ordered everyone to fast the 10th day of Muharram. So this is the main reason why we fast on the 10th of Muharram. In commemoration of the legacy of Musa, because Musa ﷺ fasted and he was grateful to Allah Taala for that. And likewise, we in remembering Musa alayhi salam are also supposed to fast. Another hadith of why we fast on the day of Ashura is Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, fasting on the day of Ashura, I'm hopeful, hopeful it will expiate sins for the past year. Remember I said we start off our year with good and we end our year with good. So remember last month of the Islamic calendar we get the day of Arafah to fast. Right? And then in the beginning of the year, we get the 10th of Muharram to fast. And li th this way, we are always in a habit of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to forgive our sins. Because remember, Prophet says every single person makes mistakes and every person commits sins. And there are some sins, dear brothers and sisters, we commit that we do not know and we are so negligent about. And there are some mistakes that we commit that we don't even consider them as mistakes. Right? SubhanAllah. Sometimes we get so used to committing sins that they become part of our habits right so that's why Allah gives you these small small opportunities so that you take advantage and you continuously um, have a reason for why Allah is keeps on forgiving you another thing that um, inshallah before going into the reasoning or main point of reflection of why we have reverence for the day of Ashura and why we celebrate the day of Ashura. Truly, we do celebrate the day of Ashura. Why do we do that? Inshallah, let me let me go over um, so some of the issues related with the fasting. So, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said that خالف خالف اليهود that we would want to differ from the Jewish community, and for that reason, we would fast on the ninth of Muharram as well. So not only the 10th, but it is recommended that a person fasts on the 9th of Muharram and the 10th, 10th of Muharram. But remember, you know, subhanAllah, uh, according to another another narration, a person is supposed to either fast a day before or day after the 10th of Muharram, not 10th Muharram in itself. So either fast 9th and 10th or fast 10th and 11th. And also some scholars said it is it is okay if a person fasts 9, 10, and 11. But let's say a person can only manage to do one day, nine, a tenth. Would it be permissible? Yes, it is permissible. And yes, they will also get the reward of, of, of their sins being forgiven for the past year. But it is not what is recommended by the Prophet ﷺ. So try to fast the 9th and the 10th, if not 10th and 11th. Or try to fast 9th, 10th, and 11th. Because after all, we are in the month of Muharram. And the best fasting done after Ramadan is done in the month of Muharram. Now let's talk about the main point of reflection that we have. The main point of reflection. Why do we celebrate and commemorate the day of Ashura? As Prophet ﷺ clearly mentioned in his hadith, that فَنَحْنُ أَحَقُّ وَأَوْلَى بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ We have more right and we have more closeness to Musa السلام, than you do. So, inshallah, go get, getting into that, what does that mean? Because this is the day, the, the 10th of Muharram is the day when Musa السلام, became victorious and had triumph over Fir'aun. Why is this so significant? Because Fir'aun was the one who said, "Ana Rabbukum al-A'la," I am the Lord Most High. Fir'aun was the one who tortured people and who would slaughter babies in their cradles. And Fir'aun was the one who would take snatch babies from their mothers. Right? Such a tyrant, tyrant, such a volume, such an oppressor. Right? On this day, was beaten by Musa alayhi salam, and Musa alayhi salam became victorious and there are so many lessons that are embedded in, into this so now but I want to ref share some points of reflection here that why we hold this day why, why we hold this day to be special right only because Prophet Sallallahu told us to right and he told us the reasoning because our linkage with Musa Musa alayhi salatu wassalam but why is Prophet ﷺ telling the Jewish community that we have more right to Musa than you two? Because Musa ﷺ spoke truth to power. He stood for justice. Musa ﷺ, you know, he went against the grain and he took on the tyrant. And he conveyed the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, Prophet ﷺ came to give the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But remember, Prophet ﷺ is from a separate lineage from Musa السلام. It's a separate culture. It's a separate race. And yet he's saying, we have more closeness and we have more right to Musa than you do. That shows that how valuable these principles are to our faith, 
that whoever stands for justice and whoever stands against the oppressors and whoever stands for the truth and for the for 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 the for what is right we as muslims are always supportive of that we as muslims are told to you know subhanallah show our support for that and you know this is one of the main reasons why we fast on the day of ashura to recognize that we will always side with the people of truth that we will never become part of any oppression and that we will never never side and never give any support to tyrants because this is our faith and the crux of our faith is justice and fairness and equity and the story of Musa alayhi salam dear brothers and sisters it is the most repeated story in Quran al-Kareem it is the most repeated story in Quran al-Kareem you know subhanallah surah al-Qasas the entire chapter it is talking about the story of Musa surah Taha surah, surah uh, Naml um, and then um, surah Al-Shu'ara all, all all these sto- all these chapters, Surah, to- Surah Yunus, Surah Araf, and then Surah, uh, uh, and then you know, Subhanallah, Surah ba- uh, Bani Israel or Surah Al Isra, they all are talking about Musa alayhi salam. Why? Why does Allah Subhanahu wa Taala share this story more than any other prophet? There are two reasons: to tell us that we are following the same path as Musa alayhi salatu wasalam meaning standing for truth and worshiping only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most difficult circumstances. But also another reason is Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's very important hadith that he resembled the nation of Musa alayhi salam and his ummah, his nation, like the pair, like, like, like the pair of shoes. Right? One resembles the other. He said the likeness of my ummah and the ummah of Musa alayhi salam is like the pair of shoes. Right, one resembles the other, meaning the path that they followed and the mistakes that they made. You know, we as our ummah, we as an ummah, if we do not learn from that, then naturally we will be treading upon that same path. Another reason, why, why? Because on this day we are truly, we have to reflect, we have to ponder that why are we fasting, right? Tenth of Muharram. Why is this so special? Ultimately, the victory lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how powerful the opponent, opponent is, right? If he is a volum, if he's a tyrant, he's a tyrant. If the system is corrupt, the system is corrupt, right? We as Muslims, we always have to stand with truth, no matter how outdated or how out of culture it may look. You know, so subhanAllah, this is another lesson that we take from that. That Musa, Musa alayhi salam, he came on the brink of the Red Sea, right? Trying to cross the river or trying to cross the sea. Hatta idha adrakahu al gharaq right? Wajawasna bi bani Israel al bahra fatba'ahum wa junooduhu baghiyan wa adwa, fatba'ahum fir'aun wa junooduhu baghiyan wa atwa. When they were fleeing the army of Fir'aun, right? They came to the sea. What did the companions of Musa alayhi salam say? He said that we are destroyed. We are subha- we are almost doomed for destruction now. There's no way out. You know, behind us is the army of Pharaoh and in front of us is the sea. And Musa alayhi salam is saying, Qala kalla inna ma'i ya Rabbi sayahdeen, that no with me is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was instructed to he was instructed you know, subhanAllah, to put his staff on the rock and the sea parted. And Musa alayhi salam, the path was made for Musa alayhi salam. So subhanAllah, Pharaoh, who was chasing Musa alayhi salam, he came. He came to the sea and he saw that unnatural miracle taking place right in front of his eyes. He saw the sea being parted in front of his eyes. Right? That is the great, one of the greatest signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That how did this happen? How did this happen? It only happened because of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He saw that directly in front of him. And yet he persisted on pursuing Musa alayhi salam rather than accepting and being with Musa alayhi salam. 
you know, this shows us sometimes Allah gives us signs that are in front of us and due to our arrogance, we become blinded by it. Right? We, all, we are always saying, Oh Allah, show us a sign. Oh Allah, show us a sign. Right? Well, currently, one of the biggest signs that Allah has given us is the, is the virus that we are dealing with, COVID-19. Right? This is the sign of Allah. That a virus which is so small, a people cannot even see from their naked eyes. Right? We are scared of that. That is attacking and that is killing people. Right? So subhanAllah, sometimes the signs of Allah are there in front of us, but arrogance makes a person blind. Until Fir'aun and his, his, his army, they reached through the middle of the sea, and the sea came together. The two seas which were parted, they came together. Right? And at that time, Fir'aun says, قَالَ آمَنْتُ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا الَّذِي آمَنْتُ بِهِ بَنُوا إِسْرَائِيلُ وَأَنَا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ That now, now I acknowledge that there is no God but one. But it was too late by then. That was too late. So remember, Allah gives you opportunities after opportunities, makes you see signs, but do not become blinded and accept those signs before it is too late. Like we learned from this interaction between Musa and Fir'aun. So dear brothers and sisters, I, I felt it was important that we spend some time in showing some reflections re 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 regarding the story of Musa and his, his, his triumph and his victory that Allah gave him over Fir Fir'aun or the Pharaoh. Now, as I mentioned, this is the main reason why we hold the day of Ashura in, in, in reverence and we commemorate and we celebrate the day of Ashura by fasting to thank Allah for the many gifts and to acknowledge that everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now there are some other events that have happened in the history which are ascribed and attributed to happen on the day of Ashura. And inshallah I want to get into those as well. That no doubt this day is significant, um, the day of Ashura is significant and the day of Ashura it, it is virtuous but I mentioned the main reason why it is virtuous and the main reason why we fast on the day of Ashura. It is following the Sunnah of Prophet Now there are two categories when it comes to the historical events that are mentioned in the books as to what happened on the day of Ashura. You can put these into two categories. You can put one in one in where there are some references from the life of Prophet And then there are others where there is no basis and they're actually fabricated narrations which are falsely ascri ascribed to the Prophet So let me go in order inshallah. So Imam, uh, Imam in the Rajab also narrates this. This hadith is mentioned in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad that on this day, on the day of Ashura, the ship of Nuh alayhi salam Remember Nuh and, and, the, and the people at the time of Nuh salam, they were completely destroyed with the flood except for those who were on that ship with Nuh salam. They came to a stop on the day of Ashura which is 10th of Muharram. And that is narrated in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed. No doubt the Hadith scholars, they have argued the authenticity and the reliability of that report. But nonetheless, even, even though they are still stronger than the other events that we commonly ascribe that they happen on the day of Ashura. So the ship of Nuh السلام, it came to a stop on the day of Ashura. And again, there are so many lessons you can take from the story of Nuh السلام. Also, Adam السلام's, his tawbah, his repentance was accepted on the day of Ashura. And that is also actually uh, narrated by Imam Ibn Rajab um, and he um, it, is, it is narrated by Imam Ibn Rajab that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that on the day of Ashura there were nations who repented and Allah accepted their repentance and of them Adam Alayhi Salam his repentance was accepted and I want to mention one dua of Adam Alayhi Salam which he made he said Rabbana zalamna anfusana O Allah we have wronged ourselves wa illam taghfir lana 
If you do not forgive us, warhamna and have mercy upon us, lanakunanna min al-khasirin, then surely we will be from amongst the losers. Right? This gives you one very important, beautiful lesson that always show guilt and remorse to Allah. As they say, an-nadamatu min tawbah that showing remorse and guilt over a sin, it is actually part of repentance. And then lastly, the repentance of the nation of Yunus alayhi salam, his nation, not Yunus alayhi salam himself, but the repentance of his nation, it happened on the day of Ashura. So, inshallah, I will go, I will go into some some other events which are falsely uh, attributed to happen on the day of Ashura. But repentance of Yunus alayhi salam and his nation happened on the day of Ashura, which also Imam Ibn Rajab or Imam Ibn Rajab has narrated, and this this hadith is also mentioned in Mujma Zawaid or from Imam Al Haythami. So, why is that so important? Because the nation of Yunus alayhi salam. The adab of Allah, the punishment of Allah started to come upon that nation, but it was taken away. Because they as a qawm, as a nation repented back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is extremely interesting because you do not see many examples that once the adab of Allah starts, because it, it comes on the people who are wicked and righteous alike. But that adab of Allah was taken away because of the sincere repentance of the nation of Yunus alayhi salam. So what do we learn from this? We learn that the day of Ashura, it is not only to fast, but it is also to repent and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Because on this day, Allah accepted their repentance and no matter what you have done, and remember the door of repentance is always open for you. The door of repentance never closes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, out of His mercy and out of Him being ghafoor rahim He will always facilitate a person's repentance. So um, the hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is reported through Abu Musa, al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu, that هذا يوم تاب الله فيه على قوم فجعلوه صلاة وسوما That this day, the nations, they repented back to Allah, referring to the nation of Yunus alayhi salam. So choose and, and make this day a day of prayer and a day of fasting. So not just any ordinary day, right? It's a, it is a special day. Allah is forgiving you, right? Allah is always there to forgive you. Whether we want to accept that forgiveness or not, whether we want to take advantage of that opportunity or not, that's upon us, right? So these are the three events. So first, uh, for, uh, first of all, the tawbah of Adam alayhi salam, the ship of Nuh alayhi salam, and the repentance of the nation of Yunus alayhi salam. They are these three events are are found in the books of hadith to be happened on the day of Ashura. And as I mentioned, there are some scholars who argue the reliability and the strength of the narrations. But nonetheless, these narrations are still somewhat. Uh, uh, somewhat strong, they're not completely da'if, they're not completely mawduk, they're not completely fabricated and they're not completely weak they're still um, not, even if some scholars consider them as weak they are not too weak but then there are other events which people say happened on the day of Ashura where there is absolutely no proof of them and inshallah I'm, I want to list I want to mention a few of those so for example on the day of Ashura, it is said that that Adam alayhi salam was created. It is said that on the day of Ashura, Adam alayhi salam, he was expelled from the earth. And on the day of Ashura, the repentance of Adam alayhi salam was accepted. And on the day of Ashura, Adam alayhi salam passed away. It is also narrated that on the day of Ashura, Idris alayhi salam, he was raised to the heavens. It is also narrated that on the day of Ashura, Ibrahim alayhi salam was rescued from the fire. Or on the, on the day of Ashura, when Ibrahim alayhi salam was put in the fire, that fire cooled down on the day of Ashura. It is also narrated that on this day, the flood came on the nation of Nuh alayhi salam. And on this day, the flood stopped and the ship came to a rescue uh, for the nation of Nuh alayhi salam. 
It is also narrated that on this day Allah revealed Tawrat on Musa alayhi salam. It is also narrated that on this day Ismail alayhi salam was saved from being slaughtered. And likewise on this day, the day of Ashura, Yusuf alayhi salam, he was he came out from the prison. On the day of Ashura, Yaqub alayhi salam, his eyesight was given back. On the day of Ashura, Ayyub alayhi salam and the sickness and the disease that was afflicted to Ayyub alayhi salam that was removed on the day of Ashura. It is narrated that on the day of Ashura, Yunus alayhi salam, he Yunus alayhi salam uh, he he was he came out from the belly of that fish. And likewise it is also narrated that on this day of Ashura Allah parted the sea for the uh, before Bani Israel for the nation of Musa alayhi salam. And likewise it is narrated that on this day of Ashura Allah accepted the tawbah, the repentance of the qawm of Yunus alayhi salam. So as I as I as I mentioned, you know there there are three events which there are other narrations which support them right like the repentance of Adam alayhi salam and uh, the rescue of the ship of Nuh alayhi salam and that coming to stop and the acceptance of repentance of the nation of uh, Yunus alayhi salam but other than that all these events for example Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, the fire cooling down or Yunus al or Yusuf alayhi salam coming out from prison Yaqub alayhi salam his eyesight being returned all these events they are false and this there's one particular lengthy narration which is narrated from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu which um, you know contains all these events uh, that that are that are that are ascribed to happen on the day of Ashura but that is a clearly fabricated hadith which Imam Ibn Jawzi has put in his al mawdu'at in his in his list of fabrications the ahadith which are clearly fabricated so this hadith which lists all these events that are supposedly happened on the day of ashura it is completely fabricated so yunus uh, salam coming out from the belly of the fish or adam salam being created on the day of ashura being descended on this earth on the day of ashura all of them are completely falsely ascribed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and there is no proof that this actually happened on the day of Ashura but again going back to the topic why do we have reverence and respect for this day because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did and the reasoning behind this Musa Alaihi Salam and his nation they were given triumph over Fir'aun and Fir'aun was uh, destroyed and he was drowned on this day and lastly, dear brothers and sisters, um, before I conclude, another another falsely attributed another falsely attributed event that is that will happen is linked to the day of Ashura, which is that the day of judgment will take place on the day of Ashura. The day of judgment will take place on the day of Friday, which will happen to be on the day of Ashura. SubhanAllah, just a reflection that is coming to my mind. This year, the day of Ashura is coming on a Saturday. So that means we are saved. <laughs> SubhanAllah, but that is not true. It is completely false. There is no evidence whatsoever that the day of judgment will happen on the day of Ashura. However, it will happen on the day of Friday, but not on the day of Ashura. Because Allah said that قُلْ إِنَّمَا عِلْمُهَا in the law that the knowledge of the Day of Judgment only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah before I make the concluding dua, another very, very significant and important event that happened on the 10th of Muharram. No doubt this is the most commonly known event which is in the knowledge of every Muslim. That was the massacre and the wrongful and unjust killing of Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the Battle of Karbala. Inshallah, that event will be in detail talked about next Sunday. Inshallah, I've completely separated that. That will be talked about next Sunday. However, I do want to mention 
that the reason why we celebrate or have reverence for the day of Ashura and why we fast on the day of Ashura has no linkage with what happened or why or or it has no linkage to the martyrdom of Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu right Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu he's the grandson of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so next Sunday we will talk about that and we will talk about the family of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what are some of the rights that we as a nation have and how we should um how we should hold the family of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what are some of the matters of creed regarding the family of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so inshallah that will be discussed next Sunday which will be the 11th of Muharram which will be the day following the day of Ashura lastly dear brothers and sisters we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us always stand up for justice may we always be the people who side with the oppressors and we may be always be the people who call wrong a wrong and may we always be guided to the straight path because subhanallah as i mentioned the main story from the musa life of musa alayhi salam and his encounter with fir'aun is never for a second let go of truth always be on the side of truth because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's victory is with the people of truth is with the people of justice and inshallah we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us reflect on these events and we ask allah to forgive our sins and shortcomings and mistakes and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his pleasure and we ask allah to safeguard us and our families and protect us and our families and give us love for him and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam jazakum allah khairan subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik